Roy's Archie Shop, and I'm over here by his knife gallery. And I noticed different things about these knives. They got all different types of blades and full tang, and I'm not really good with all that stuff, but I want Mr. Roy to display that to me. Let's take a look at these knives first. Yes, Ranger Cookie. Hey, how you doing today? Uh, my name is Roy, and uh, we have Roy's Knife and Archer Shop. And today we, uh, Sean or Cookie, Ranger Cookie and I thought we'd discuss the different types of grinds in hunting and skinning knives. And uh, the grind is this part of the, the blade that starts, in this case, this is a flat grind. And if you can see it this way, you can see as, it, as the grind goes to the cutting edge, this area is flat. So that's a flat grind, and this is on a top uh, hunting skinning knife. And that's the flat grind. Now here's a buck skinning knife, and this is a hollow grind. And you can see, you can see this area is kind of scooped out this way. Okay, what what the different grinds do is on a thick thick spine blade. On a hollow grind, the grind, the hollow grind allows the cutting edge to be thin and very sharp. Okay. Now on a flat grind, you can see there's a little more steel towards the cutting edge here. So what that does, it gives you a strong, a strong edge, but very sharp. So those are the two main types of, of grinds. Uh, and then going to these Swiss knives, these are Kellum uh, Swiss knives, and these are flat grinds, and these are also called Scandi grinds, uh, short for Scandinavians, a style of knife making. And you can see, see how the grind is, again, starts a, a little bit higher than the center of the blade, and it's flat going down to the cutting edge. Again, a Scandi grind, flat grind, and that is uh, compared to this buck knife, which has a hollow grind. So those are the two main types of grinds, with the Scandi grind being a variation of the flat grind. Each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. So let, let's talk about those uh, disadvantages, not, not necessarily disadvantages, but but each grind has has its own particular signature meaning for one this this is a wide blade and with the hollow grind it grinds down and gives you a very sharp very thin thin amount of steel towards the cutting edge so that's a real sharp knife and a, not a knife that you would want to sh uh, chop with but just a pure d or sharp skinning knife. So hollow grind, thin edge, versus a flat grind, which has more steel in the cutting edge. So this is a knife uh, more in the survival uh, hunting uh, category that uh, 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 from a survival standpoint, you could use this knife uh, for a, a batoning, which is using another weight to hammer through, uh, say, a, a large a tree limb and not risk any damage to the blade because of the amount of steel that you have in the knife. So this is a knife you can literally... I see there is full tang too, correct? That's why That's it's correct. a heavy do? That, well, that is also the style of this knife, full tang. And you can see the blade goes all the way through uh, uh, the handle here with micarta slabs on either side. So this is a full tang, and you can see the, the steel going all the way through here. That's compared to a hidden tang. Now these two knives have what's called the hidden tang, and that tang is a sharp spike kind of a mechanism coming out of the blade through the handle. So these, and that, that's two different styles of knife making whereas this 
full tank has two slabs, has a slab on either side of my carter. The buck knife is, uh, their composite material is a, is a uh, probably a piece of material very similar to my carter, uh, or similar to, uh, uh, to Formica, where a hole is drilled in the material and a tang, this, this narrow tang is, is uh, either epoxied or pinned to the butt cap as this one is. This is also a hidden tang and you can see the tang goes all the way through the knife handle and in this case this is I believe a Baltic Arctic or a, a Alaskan, uh, uh, excuse me, Alaskan birch wood. You can see the butt cap here that goes all the way through. So two different, two different types of handle construction and uh, two different uh, types of blade grind, flat grind and hollow grind with a variation with the Scandi flat grind. Okay, that's basically the two, two, uh, two types of grinds with the modified Scandi grind and then two types of handle construction. Uh, discuss the type of locking mechanisms in folding knives. <clears throat> okay, and uh, now we're kind of in our folding knife department. So what we'll be looking at now is the different types of locking mechanisms uh, and and a spring a spring type. Uh, mechanisms to uh, to open and close the blade of a uh, folding knife. Uh, what we what we uh, have forgotten now is assisted opening knives and but I see uh, yes we do have an assisted opening knife so let's let's look at a basic <coughs> let's look at a basic folding knife and this is called a spring back, a spring back. So the this this is this is the kind of knife our grandpas uh, carried at one time. So this is a, a traditional type uh, folder knife. This this particular knife is a case trapper. It has two blades, and the blade is just open, and the, this back part or the back spring is what keeps the blade closed or open. So there's no no locking mechanism as such, but this but the the spring action of this back spring is what keeps the blade uh, open. And so this blade has this knife has good blade tension, good spring tension, uh, safe to use. And uh, in a spring action, in a back spring type of blade, uh, you can hear how it walks and talks. Okay, that term means there's, there's, there's good action to the spring and the blades have been uh, adjusted by a cutler to walk and talk and you can hear that act, you can hear that clicking sound which means it, it closes with a, with a good uh, a, a good snap to it, and that's always an in indication that it's functioning well. So this is a traditional spring back blade, no locking mechanism, and and uh, in a in a case trapper. Okay, from that we go to in uh, in the way these different locking mechanisms evolve. Uh, we go next to, and this happens to be an assisted opening knife, which means the blade is 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 started the, the the outward movement, the opening movement is started manually, and as as that movement, as that blade moves, then a spring assist assist to complete the opening process. This is a Kershaw, and the model is a leak. And uh, assisted opening by pressing this this part of the blade called the kick, and it works 
like that. So very smooth knife. And the locking mechanism on this knife is called a liner lock. And you can see this bar here that keeps the blade from closing accidentally. In order to close it, your thumb goes in here, moves that locking bar to the left, and then you can close the blade. As you close the blade, you can, you can feel the spring tension. And then it's, when it seats in the handle, uh, it also has a safety here. So where the knife won't open accidentally in your pocket, even though I did field test these for a few years and the knives are still safe even when they're, when the safety is not on. So it's, it's hard to, to accidentally cause this knife to open in your pocket. I've, I've, I've tried it <coughs> and uh, it's hard, it's, it, it was, it's real uh, safe and it was hard to get the knife to open. I had to force it up open in my pocket really so it is still a safe knife. Again, this is called an assisted opening knife that is a liner lock and this is the liner mechanism here that's part of the construction of the knife and to unlock it move the bar to the side. That's a great knife. Okay now here we go to this is a little Gerber uh, this is a little Gerber LST, and it is a locking blade, and it has a, a back lock here, a locking bar that prevents the knife from closing accidentally, as do, as do the, the uh, liner lock on the Kershaw. So in order to close this knife, you can see this little indentation here on the back of the knife, you press that down, that lifts this part of the locking bar up, which, which connects to the blade with a notch right there. So when it's closed, that notch comes down, engages in that, in that space to prevent the blade from closing accidentally. So uh, pressing the bar unlocks the blade, and generally you open it in a traditional way. Now this knife is a smooth knife and it can be opened with one hand when you when you hold the knife like this and you're taking kind of the second finger and the and your thumb and you can force that blade open like that if you need to open it with one hand. A lot of times you're fishing or hunting, you got your left hand uh, 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 holding some work and you need your knife so you need to open it with one hand and then close it with one hand when you're finishing the chore. So again, a traditional lockback knife. Uh, again, this is a little Gerber LST, very thin, lightweight, good steel, and uh, and a traditional lock bar back, uh, a locking bar lockback. Okay, the next kind of mechan locking mechanism is this is a, a French open L, and uh, this knife has been made, uh, don't quote me on the historical information here, but I believe it was, it was made about the 1800s, uh, and again, uh, uh, don't, don't quote my inaccuracies on some of the the historical information here, but I believe this knife was actually designed by a German and is, is uh, made in France. Uh, this is called a, it's called the French Opinel and has a birch wood or uh, apple wood handle. It's opened in a traditional way. This is called a nail nick, so your fingernail goes in there to open the blade. And this locking mechanism is a ferrule that rotates, and as it rotates, it puts part of that ferrule in front of, in the, in the back of the, 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 the blade there, I believe that's called the Ricasso area, and prevents the blade from closing accidentally. So in order to close it, you move that ferrule to the side, 
and close the blade in the traditional way. So this blade, this knife is, is very, the idea is very simple. You have basically the wood, the wood handle part of the knife, then the ferrule, which is two parts with a pivot pin, and then the, and then the blade itself, well, in this case is high carbon, and it has that little carbon signature on this knife. This is an inexpensive knife. It is really a good bargain and an inexpensive knife. No, uh, no real lipstick features. It is a two-handed knife, and it has a little flat area. So uh, again, there's no springs in the knife. Sometimes a blade will stick, and it's designed to to tap like that and open the blade and then turn the ferrule to lock it. Lightweight, good steel, easy to sharpen. It, uh, it's carbon steel, so it will take a little stain, uh, uh, but that can be eliminated by uh, just a little maintenance. So uh, cleaning it and, and wiping it off. Uh, before you put it back in your pocket. So you can see the difference. You can see the difference uh, in in carbon steel after it's used a while. You see that little, you see that little uh, a coloration has changed there in carbon steel, whereas you you don't necessarily see that in stainless steel. So that that's a little comparison of carbon steel, stainless steel. Okay, looking forward to having you visit us on the next video. I'm Roy, and the man behind the camera, again, is Ranger. I learned a lot today at Roy's Archery Shop. I hope you learned something too from Mr. Roy. He has a lot of knowledge in that head of his. So, um, hope you enjoy this knife review. I learned a lot, like I said, damn this look here. Um, I learned a lot about the full time, which is very heavy duty, than uh, the non full time. So, um, and, and I noticed these lights with the uh, not full time is a little lighter than the full time. So, I learned a lot today. Alright, I'm Ranger Kooky. I hope you enjoy this crazy video of Mr. Roy showing his and displaying his knife skills. <laughs> Alright.